got Chris Bono back in the house. And uh, for those of you out there that are familiar with True Fire, um, you've got to be familiar with Chris Bono. Chris and True Fire, we started working together in 2008. Chris has produced 40 courses. I think this is his 40th course here. We call him the Professor of the Deep. And anyone familiar with his library will totally get what we're talking about. He he can go deep on any subject. And, uh, you know, it embarrasses him when I say this, but I refer to him as the Ted Green of modern guitar. Um, The guy's amazing. He's a monster player, but a savant educator. I mean... He, he knows he's a walking encyclopedia. It's crazy. Um, he's got does private lessons with us. He has the classroom. Does channel his guitar gym series is one of our most popular series in the entire library. So here's the deal. We've been waiting and wanting to do a sight reading course on guitar. Keep playing, Chris. I'm still talking here. <laughs> um, for a very, very long time. It's one of our top requested topics. Um, keep going. You n- notice he broke a string. Okay. <laughs> Don't mean a thing. <laughs> um, and uh, that's what we're shooting this week. Uh, he uh, wrote a book on sight reading, bestseller. And now we're doing a, uh, a, a interactive video course on the topic. Chris, what happened there, man? I broke string. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shall I keep talking so you have a chance to restring it? Or can no, you... that's not going to happen. We're definitely going to have to get another guitar. But okay. I'm just getting it All right, the, way, the guys so. will get you another guitar. Yeah. Um, maybe they'll string it for you because I really want to show that off later, if we could. Um, that is Chris's new signature guitar. Prototype. We prototype. Are, we are getting really close. This is version number two. And uh, it's got some amazing features on it. It sounds absolutely incredible. Um, all right, we're getting guitars, but let's talk about this course. Let's talk about sight reading. So, you know, um, I guess because of the accessible nature of guitar, um, most people don't learn how to read music when they start to learn how to play guitar, right, Chris? Yeah, no, generally speaking, no, they, they don't. I mean, it's sort of if, 
if you, you know, I took clarinet and saxes, you know, in class, you sort of kind of have to learn how to read music if you're playing in a band, right? Well, because there's like no band. other communication right. uh, uh, process for you to get someone to learn how to play right. on that instrument. So there are, um, God knows how many millions of guitar players out there that would right. love to be able to read music, but it's kind of this, you know, uh, mysterious, like, I, I, I don't know how to read music. I'll never learn how to read music. But um, Chris, is, is that a myth, you know, that it's difficult to learn how to sight read for guitar players? Is it a myth? Yes, it could be learned. Yeah, people have have done it. Um, it's uh, it t it takes discipline, but it, it's the same discipline that every other instrument has to apply to it. Yeah. So it's um, there is little things that do make it mildly difficult for us in some ways that are not common to other instruments. Right. But to get off the ground, um, those things don't have to come into play at first. Mm -hmm. So you're coming up to the same challenges as anybody else. So. It's, it's doable. It's just a matter of making the commitment. Yeah. And, and most important, we were talking about this before, yes. is the desire. Reading, learn how to read music on any instrument is not fun unless you really want to play. Right. And so, you know, many of our favorite guitar players famously do not know how to read music and, um, you know, don't seem to be suffering as a result of that, right? No, no. It, um, so while it's not a requirement to become a great musician, what do you think are the benefits, you know, in your eyes for learning how to read music? Well, first and foremost, it's, it's, it's our language, uh, so to speak. Um, so it's, uh, it, it, you know, if... If you love a story and you want to read it again, instead of someone telling it to you, you go to read the book and you have to have the ability to read that story. You have to have the ability to read to, mm -hmm. to hear the story again or to read it to yourself, whatever, at any time that you want to do that. Or you want to maybe expand on it and write your own story based on that. Mm -hmm. These are all things that come from learning how to read and write music or, or, or you know, words and stuff. Same thing for music. Um, uh, say I was just someone who enjoys playing music on my own, I'm, I'm a hobbyist and stuff, you just open the door to centuries of written music that you can play from any, there, there is no restrictions. There's no style restrictions. There's no nothing. It's, it's using all the same language. So yeah. I, I remember, do you remember we did an April Fool's um, kind of prank several years ago where we showed a picture of somebody with, a, you know, like a, a head set with a lot of, I don't know, diodes and wires and, you know, talked about that being a, a sight reading device that you put this thing on and you can <laughs> read instantly. Um, we got God knows tens, tens of thousands of people shouting out, you know, wanting to sign up for it. And, you know, every time we do a survey, uh, sight reading as a topic is usually at the top of the list, right? Uh -huh. So one of the other myths, I think, is you know we and we were talking about this earlier about you know there's that cry, crack sight reader that can go into the studio play Broadway um, you know do gigs put a sheet of music down and and you know read it fluently right there's that kind of sight reading um, which is very rare which by is the way. right that's but you know for you know let's call it uh, the average guitar player who um, maybe goes out to the jam sessions plays a lot at home. We were talking about, you know, how cool it would be to be able to pick up a songbook, you know, a sheet of music, uh, classical etudes, you know, pop tunes, whatever, and being able to just kind of pick out the melody, you know. Do you know that True Fire, the basic premise for True Fire many, many, many years ago was all of the articles that would appear in Guitar Player magazine, yep. right? Yep. It was all printed stuff, you know, but you couldn't hear how it was supposed to sound when played properly because most people didn't know how to read music, right? right? So that was one, you know, that was kind of one of the seeds of what True Fire was all about. Here, you know, it was audio back in the Notes day. Notes on call. Right, Notes on call. Notes on call. And, uh, and, and now, of course, it's, it's video. Um, but, you know, 
our goal together here is to come up with a curriculum that's accessible, that can get somebody up and running quickly, right? And, um, and that's what you've done here with this uh, sight reading for guitarists. This is really level one, right? This yes. gets you up and running, this right? This is day one. Okay. So you, you have your guitar. We filled sort of nicely there. <laughs> You back in your comfort zone? Do you want to play it? Make sure it's in tune and it works and everything. I'm trusting that Tommy handed me a guitar that's in tune, but that's a that's a Michael Tuttle. Yeah, Jeff McElane will be uh, yeah. be happy, Mr. Tuttle and Mr. McElane. Thank you. Right, we're good. All right, so let's talk about this course. First of all, I urge everybody out there to do a couple of things. Number one, tell us where you're tuned in from. We always love to hear what time zones, continents, countries, cities uh, you're from. But also, um, you know, if you're tuned in right now live and on the chat, let us know if learning how to sight read is one of the things that you also would like to do. You know, we'll do just a quick poll. How many of the people out there watching would like to learn how to sight read? While you're doing that, I'm going to ask Chris to kind of overview the curriculum. Now, you wrote a bestseller book on sight reading for guitar, right? Yes, and that was in large part in, uh, to the forward that was written by um, you. Yeah, so do you, do you, you, in other words, the forward you think uh, propelled it, was, it to it was the number selling one point. with a bullet, right? It was the selling point, <laughs> yep. Um, the book was phenomenal. At the same time, it was a book, and we didn't have all of the, let's call it, interactive or multimedia elements you know you didn't have that available it's a different form. so you crafted uh i think a really cool curriculum and would you just describe give an overview of what you're doing with this course okay and and um a serious credit needs to go to jeff sheets too we we both worked on this uh a lot and we've talked about it all three of us talked about that's it. that's jeff quite, sheets our director of education yep, here quite Chufar. a bit a lot of a lot of talks between us phone calls and stuff like that so the challenge was how do we take something that's been traditionally taught, usually one-on-one -on -one between teacher and student, and you know through paper? How do we, how do we take advantage of, um, of uh, the video format that we have, and also how do we get rid of one thing that seems to plague learning how to read, and that is it's boring, mm -hmm. because we have no choice to play stuff, but that is very simple because mm -hmm. you're learning and you need to take it slow. So, what? What I did was, um, you know, in the very beginning, we, we got to get off the ground the same way everybody does. We have to learn about the elements. Um, they are, you know, we have to have a basic understanding of music is rhythm and pitch, and that's what you're reading. The two basic elements you will read forever and ever is rhythm and pitch. A um, couple components, we'll, you know, I'll take you through explaining the, 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 the bare bone stuff that we need to be aware of. Uh, the staff, the clef, the time signature, the key signature. You know, what do bar lines mean? That's all we need for right now. Mm -hmm. From there, we'll dive into notes. You know, positioning them on the staff, and that's how you identify what pitch they are. Mm -hmm. And it's really important from the very beginning that um, that positioning is going from one note to the next. There is a, there is a connection system there. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, you know, we have five lines of four spaces on a staff. If I put a note, say, first note we're going to learn is B. So that pitch is the middle line of that staff. That's why I like to start right there. It's a mm -hmm. good visual. Because, you know, it's a little tricky. These little, you know, very skinny lines. And stuff. Right. So right smack in the middle, you know, that bullseye right there is, is the B. And when we go to the next note, which will be C, it's alphabetically the next one, it's the next note up, it will go to the next space. So, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a, a logical way that the staff works. And I remember when I first started to learn to read, no one told me that. Mm -hmm. These were things just like, hey, it was very black and white. It was, this is what it is, and just go do this, kid. Mm -hmm. And another problem with that was they only give you a little bit. You know, if you, everybody who's ever worked for the Mel Bay book or mm -hmm. the other, yeah. um, uh, the Yamaha series books, and, you know, all those staple, the Alfred series books mm -hmm. and stuff like that, they'll show you a concept, give you just a little bit of it, and then move right to the next concept mm -hmm. where I learned from teaching hours and hours and lots and lots and lots of students, private students, realizing one of the things wrong here is we're mm -hmm. not spending enough time 
on learning these concepts. Mm -hmm. We're moving too fast. So let's look at that concept. Um, is Tommy able to show a, a staff so you can show that B? Yep. So um, I have a, a chart right here. Yeah. So this is uh, something that's going to be, this is directly coming from what's going to be in the course. And a quick question for you. So you played, you're saying that the middle line in the staff is the B. Yes. yes. So, so here's your B. And you're, you're playing the open B string. I'm playing an open B string, right. And do, um, one of the questions we get asked all the time is when sight reading, which B are you playing? <laughs> you know, the open B or the B on the fourth string or third string, where? Well, if you remember I said before, there is, this, there is one of the thing, one, there is something in music reading that does come to, it's a challenge for guitar players, it's a little unique. It's a challenge for fretted instruments. Mm -hmm. um, and there it is. We have the ability to play the same pitch in different parts of the neck. And on paper, on, on a staff, it's exactly the same. Mm -hmm. There are indications that will tell you about positions and stuff like that. For our purposes here, in the very beginning of the reading thing, I'm going to keep you on one B, you know, mm -hmm. one location. Mm -hmm. And to set that up down the road, we're going to, you know, we'll, we'll get into that conversation. But right now it's important to focus on the one B. And it's going to be this open B. Okay. And that, that single one. So just looking at the, uh, the chart and just going through it uh, briefly with the main mechanics, you have, um, if you're looking at the first line, <clears throat> it's called a system. Um, you have, you see the staff, the five lines, four spaces. Treble clef is over there. That's our clef. That indicates a certain pitch range, and that tells us how to treat the staff. You know, how, uh, where, where notes are placed, they correspond with the notes that we are, are interpreting them as. So that B is that B because of that clef. If you have a different clef on there, that would be a different note located in the same exact area. Mm -hmm. So for us, there will always be a, tr a, a treble clef, also known as a G clef. Right. So for guitar players, that's what their music's going to look like. That's us. Yeah. Not saying you can't learn how to read other clefs. But so just tell us what we're looking at there. So we got a treble clef. we got a time signature, 4-4 four, four on top of each other. Um, top number tells us how many beats we have per bar. And that segmentation is, look at that first system. There's four bars right there. So those areas, those, those pieces... We're, we're uh, dedicating four beats to each one of those. That's called a meter. It's super important that um, we establish that. Throughout the whole course, we're going to keep you in four. So it's not something you have to worry about. Is it going to change or anything like that? Right. Nope. We're going to stay in four the so whole time. So we're in four, four. And the note that we see in the first measure is a B. That pitch is B. Which Middle line. For in the purpose for this course and this live broadcast is the note you just played. Yes, open B. Okay, and that is, what rhythm is that? So, that is a whole note. Right. I, uh, uh, rhythm is, um, I think, the first thing that you should tackle. So, it, it, it would be a good idea, before you even start reading that pitch, I would turn and click on, and maybe Tommy can give me one to, uh, to do this. Um, I would turn and click on, and I would, Play that rhythm. Not worried about pitch yet. I'm just worried mm -hmm. about making the attack. I want to learn how to react to the the, uh, the half of the notation, half of the message, which is the rhythm. Okay. So, is uh, Tommy can I have a click? Is that possible? One sec. So we can you can clap this rhythm. Snap your Here, finger. I'll clap for you. Leg. There we go. There you go. All right. So that stress right there is our one. So okay. let's say I'm coming in. One, two, three. You'd be playing here, two, three, four, and that's where your, your whole note is being played, right? Yeah. Okay. That's half the equation. I would go through the whole chart. I would go through any one of these charts mm -hmm. and do that just to get a feel for the rhythm. Mm -hmm. um, put the other half of the equation in the pitch, which is a B. So really your first tip, right, is don't even worry about pitch work on the rhythm of what you see in front of you. Yes. Right? Okay? Yes. Yeah, get, get, get a win under your belt mm -hmm. before you uh, try to go in and do two things at once. Try to do one thing at once, and rhythm is, is the better place to start. Mm -hmm. so, so go through the whole thing, do the, do the rhythm. Now let's go back. We know that, hey, looking at it, um, I have 16 bars. 
four systems of four, and they're all the same note. Sure, yes. Don't think that there's any, uh, any time that you're cheating. If you see, it, pr reading ahead is one of the most important things you can do. Mm -hmm. So in this case, reading ahead on this is, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty easy because it's all the same note and stuff, and, that, and that's fine. So don't think, you know, like, hey, I you know, got too much of an advantage here. Not at all. If you want to take any one that you can get. Um, so if we get that click back. Look for it. There's our one. Okay, so we get one, one, two. I'm going to start to play. Here's the B. I was doing the same thing I was doing before, except now I'm, instead of clapping my hand, I'm playing the pitch. And I just completed a system. So as I play through that, every time I play a note, my eyes immediately jump to what's coming ahead. In this mm -hmm. case, it's to the next bar for that next whole note. That right there, again, somebody never really mentioned that to me, and then that's so important. The reading ahead too. Absolutely right? have to read ahead. So you're saying you see the whole note in bar one, you hit it, but you're while that's playing, you're already reading bar two. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. So right now it may not seem different. Like I was saying, this is going to be such a different experience. Um, when we play these together in the chorus, we're... I, we are not going to play to just a click. Mm -hmm. I wanted to, because look, what are we reading? We're reading music. We're supposed mm -hmm. to be playing music. And that's, that's the goal we're, uh, you know, we're trying to always achieve. So I'm going to break it up into two times that we play together on mm -hmm. every concept. In this case, it's the B and it's the whole note. We're going to play that together the first time, very simply, with a pulse, but also I'm going to play acoustic guitar with you. Mm -hmm. This is exactly what I did in, in lessons for a long time for thousands of lessons. When a student would read with me, I would always accompany them in a way that was musical. Mm -hmm. I would never play just that with them. Mm -hmm. That's your job. Mm -hmm. I want to play with you to immediately feel like you're playing something yeah. more than just those whole notes. So you'll hear um, the acoustic guitar and we play together. Then the track after that, we're going we're gonna to bump it up a notch. So we're going to play, I'm giving you a full band track that me and Steve Jenkins got together and created these really fun so tracks. So can, can you give us, an, I mean, first of all, uh, you know, I think everybody watching could at least agree that that first piece of music, the B note, whole notes for, what, 16 measures? Yeah. Pretty much anybody can read that, right? Sure. Can read that music, right? Let's say yes. Okay. Because the only thing that might throw you off, and the reason why I made them a little long like that yeah. for something like this, um, just a, any weeny challenges. Let's make sure that we get to those sixteen bars together, and you stop at the end of those mm. sixteen bars. It's just it's, it's making you aware that you have to, even though you can see it all, yeah. you still have to be responsible right. for not getting lost. So do you, do you have this? Um, you know, your kind of your system here is, you know, looking at the piece of music, playing the rhythm, and then playing it against your acoustic guitar track? Do you have that? Can we roll that so you can give us an example of either this one or another one of the early... Do we have the acoustic track? That would be number one, yeah. We actually recorded the acoustic tracks here. That's the first time I've ever done backing tracks here. It's just acoustic. I've never recorded audio here. Always done that at home. Can we get it from the top? I'll play along. Let's go to the second bar. It's the third bar. We haven't put our count in yet. So now that B you're playing for 16 bars of whole notes, it's kind of beautiful. Mm -hmm. And you can start to appreciate very simple guitar parts in a larger production. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, you know, the end result, my goal is achieved. We're playing music together. Right. So do you have a band track with this first A2? Nice. And we are going to give you a loop so you can, um, you can practice And to your stuff. point, part of the mission is making sure you know when your 16 measures. Right. I made sure I ended at that, that uh, 16 bars. Right. But, uh, you know, playing something simple like this, it's, it's fun. It's fun right. to play over that. 
Um, so yeah, we go do that. We do something simple. We get an idea together, um, and then I bump it up a notch. Let's um, do that. In this bump particular case, uh, yeah. I will one caveat. In yes. this particular case, this is the only time, just because of the nature of our, we had to start somewhere. Right. It's the only time that the um, the acoustic track and the band track is the same thing. Everything else, you're always going to read something slightly different than the acoustic track because add that to our list of, of tips and very important things. It's super important that you read a lot, but you read fresh material. Mm -hmm. So let's, get an ex let's, let's hear the track that goes along with this, though. It's, it's, it's fun. You get an idea of the level of these tracks. Bar nine. Take my melotron. Last system. Here we go. One, two, three, out. Nice. So we, we Okay, so what we love about this curriculum and presentation is, um, and you'll see, but be, before this live session is done, we'll take you to the end of this first level, and you see the kind of music you'll be able to make. But basically, what Chris wanted to do right from the start is, number one, prove that you can read music. So if you can see that note in those 16 measures and play it like Chris just did along to the track, in fact, you are reading music, yes. okay? Admittedly, very simple, <laughs> okay? But you are reading music, and the key to that was making sure, you know, you know what the note is, but making sure you know when the 16 measures are over. So you're counting and you're looking ahead, right? And then um, you'll play along to the acoustic guitar, and then you'll play along to a band track. Um, can you step it up a level? And by the way, um, Everyone should feel free to ask as many questions as possible. Um, Ali is moderating, and she will gather all of your questions, and we'll ask Chris, you know, at regular intervals. Um, one guy, for example, Chris, you might have, someone said, well, what about the sharps and flats? <laughs> Why don't you address that right away? What do they do? Well, I think, uh, let me see if I can find that question. You know, we were looking at the staff. You were showing the... Uh, the tempo, the treble clef, um, there were no sharps and flats. No, throughout the entire course, I will not throw a sharp and a flat at you. Okay. I, um, I'm taking you through uh, um, the ground level components to right. get you to, like the goal right now is to, to read those two elements, to be able to look at the paper and to be able to interpret rhythm and pitch. Right. Pitch and ry rhythm and pitch will be enhanced as you keep moving forward, rhythms will start getting divided. Yeah. So instead of always playing things right on the pulse, right. there'll be things being played off the pulse and there'll be things being played in different groupings. Right. Pitch, pitch will start to travel in different directions. Um, like, you know, right now we just read one note. Mm -hmm. So an obvious next step is going to be but, two and, notes. And since there are no sharps or flats, that means we're in the key of... We're in the key of C, but I right. did. I did in the tunes at the end. I did start uh, not only using just the C root, a C mm -hmm. major um, uh, environment. I believe the blues I did is a G mixolydian, mm -hmm. and there's a funk thing in there, of course. Um, that's a D Dorian thing, and there is a, a a nice you know fun rock vibe. It's an A A only thing. So actually, mm -hmm. I took you out of the key of C at the the tunes at the end. Mm -hmm. Um, but like I was saying, uh, you know, your, your, your pitch will... Not, not necessary to deal with it at this first level. No. Your, your whole gig here is getting people up and running um, and giving them, I guess, proof of life that, in fact, they can read music. Okay? Exactly. And it's also going, like I said before, right. those methods and those beginner books, they move too quick. Right. People need to have time to really digest concepts and yeah. work them and play them and right. read that slightly permutated fresh material, mm -hmm. then when you go to the next step, you have a foundation right, instead of exactly. feeling like you're always 
trying to catch up. You're, you're always... Well, absolutely. And the thing is that, you know, so many people, if we had, you know, like they said, a nickel every time someone said, oh, I, you know, I can't, I, I can't read music, you know. It's like my hands are too small or I'm not musically inclined. You know, it's one of those myths. If we had a nickel every time someone said that, we'd be doing this from Tahiti together, right? Right. So uh, let's go up a, a, a level or two and show us. So we started there. Okay. Take us someplace else. Um, I have um, a chart. See if we can of... read two notes. <laughs> well, actually, this one is uh, is uh, is three. Three. Yeah, I upped it up. Uh, you know, by this time we're at um, what would be my eighth track. So this would be um, my pair of seven and eight, my acoustic track and my uh, and my full band track. By this point, we have gone through B, C, and D. Mm -hmm. So I've, we've, we've opened up the door of how to start looking at the staff in terms of different notes, you know, mm -hmm. building off of that middle line where there's B. You know, you, you, so if you're looking at the chart. So you're, you started, you showed kind of the first lesson set, which was B. Then We're at the end of the first lesson set. And whole notes. Set. Then in the next uh, lesson set, it was half notes and C then quarter notes and D, and now you're going to show us B, B and C, D. and D. Yeah, so by this time, I've showed you the three main notes that are played on, no, no, rhythm types that are played on downbeats. Okay. Holes, halves, and quarters, four okay. beats, two beats, cool, and one beat. And um, I would be talking about how to look at the staff and see how, hey, middle line is B. Mm -hmm. The C, it's on that next space. Remember that. That's how the alphabet works on mm -hmm. a staff. It goes from line to space to line to space or space to line, space mm -hmm. to line, however, wherever you're starting from. And uh, as I'm reading, I'm reading that more than I'm reading B, you know, right. looking at the literal B. I'm right. looking at the, the progression, the, how the notes travel on the staff. Right. And, of course, I'm doing it ahead. Okay. So as soon as I play one pitch, I'm looking to the next one mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, so in this case, we have... Um, Half notes, whole notes, and quarter notes. We got those three different rhythms mm -hmm. uh, all together. Um, it's 16 bars, mm -hmm. you know. So all the tracks are at least 16 bars. The, the, when I do it with, the, with you acoustically, I'll give you eight. And mm -hmm. I'll ease you into 16 when you're learning a new concept. Mm -hmm. But once you, you know, the full tracks are always 16 bars. So, so fun. Are, are, are you going to, um, if, if, Tommy, if you could put the chart up, throughout the whole playing example. And let's see if folks can follow the chart along. Sure. And yeah. know when the 16 measures are up. Right, and this would be track um, number eight, which... And just show us quickly before you do that, because you will, in the course, will have shown us already. You showed us the B note. Right. Where's so the C? I'm going to stay the on the second string. So open B, that's middle line. Yeah. Fourth space is C. One fret away, it's a half step. Um, and... Uh, the D, if we're looking at the chart, that first appears in the third bar, and there's two half notes. That's fourth line. I remember what I said. The staff works alphabetically, line to space to line to space. Right. B was on a line, C is on a space, D is on a line, and they all... Do you all... do that every good boy deserves fudge? Do you do that? I, I don't, I don't, because I want to emphasize the building of what I just said, yeah. the way that the staff runs. I always thought that that really put me in a bad place, um, because it, it, it skipped that one really th easy thing that I just uh -huh. said, the way the staff runs line to space, line to space. Right. I was taught to look at it in that skipping way, in thirds. Right. right. But mo meanwhile, all the stuff I was reading, none of it was like that. Right. Very so there good. was this disconnect. Right. So I, I, I so, took a lot of mental notes and fr right. frustrated mental Which notes Which I the think years. is very cool. Like um, you've broken a lot of rules and kind of created new rules that actually for guitar players make it a lot, I think, a lot easier to comprehend. And um, and it's establishing, I, I don't know that it's muscle memory necessarily, but you're seeing the note on the page and on the staff and you sort of automatically know where that next note goes with your system versus, oh, every good boy deserves, oh, no, it's F-A-C-E. or It's like you have to decode it. Right. And then put it into practice. Right, you skip that whole thing. And it's supposed cool. to be something that you're supposed to react to right. instantaneously or, right. or previous to what's going to happen. Right. Yeah, it just doesn't work. All right, so those are the only three notes you're going to play. They're on the B string. Right. Open, B, C, and D. All right, let's show the whole... Um, uh, and I don't know stat. what the track um, sounds like. It'll be a fun surprise. 
Well, which but one you're it is, reading I mean. music shouldn't be a problem. Well, there you go. <laughs> there we go. Oh, yeah, I like this one. I like them all. Here comes that D. And hey, don't be afraid to play like a guitar player. A little vibrato there. Slide into it. Dynamics should go down. If you want to take liberties like that, go ahead. Because that's what guys do when they're playing on record side. That was a whole note. Coming to that last bar. So let me emphasize that point I was making as I was playing. Um, I think another thing that kills us all in, when, when learning how to read music is it puts us in this realm. So me and Jeff laughed about this when we were, we were doing this together, designing the course, because he's probably taught just as many people, logged as many hours doing this with people as I have. And uh, it's like when you start reading music, all of a sudden, like everything about the fun part about guitar just got stripped mm -hmm. away, as if it's supposed to be. As if someone made that rule. Okay, when you learn to read music, it's like you're in the white room with the bland guitar, mm -hmm. you know, and right. everything is right. just blah. You know, so when you're playing this stuff, play it. Right. If, you know, if you want to add a little vibrato, you want a grace note slide into something, yeah. like when you start feeling that comfortability, like, look, if you're coming into this as a, a mid-level player, an intermediate player, and you're feeling like, oh, I could do this, maybe, you know, you'd be surprised at some things maybe you kind of can't do, but the point is, if, if you see it coming and you can do it, go for it. Play music. You got a vibrato arm, use it. You know, you want to put a little vibrato on. You want a finger vibrato. You want to come into it. You want to, you want to hammer on uh, into something. Like, let's say I was in, um, on this in the fourth system, and I'm going from bar 13, you know, at the very beginning of the system. D. Oh, sorry, it's a B. I want to pull off to it and then hammer to the C. Be a guitar player. Be expressive mm -hmm. about it. Even mm -hmm. start to pull. Maybe play a little behind the beat, mm -hmm. you know, and start to play music. You should do this right from the beginning because you're reading music. We mm -hmm. want to play music. Cool. So it should be treated like that. It's another reason why I really wanted those tracks to be inspiring mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, something you feel like, it, you know, hey, this is, this is for real. It should be no different than any other course that I've done where you're you know, we're all trying to play something cool. So l let's do this. Although you did give us a couple of examples. Tommy, can you put the whole, like, fill the screen with the chart? And would you play it one more time? Sure. With feeling. <laughs> okay. More feeling. Um, but more cowbell. I want to see if folks can actually read the music while you're playing it. You know, follow along. Right? Yep. And remember, I, as soon as I play that first B, that's done. You're looking at that next B. Okay. And if you can see, you know, me playing that B and look at the next bar. Right. So you're, folks you're that are well, kind of watching and listening, you, you should be anticipating what the next absolutely. note or rhythm is. Absolutely. And you should absolutely know when the 16 measures are over, which are, is really what Chris has been saying. And go ahead and demonstrate how to make, you know, it a, more expressive and not really that flat, white bar. room, sterile thing you're talking about. Sure. As soon as that track comes up, we'll, we'll rock. Okay. And it's a nice slow tempo, slowish, 70 beats per minute. So here we go. Three, four. Up to that D. Play it, pull it. Up to D. So I'm bending up to it. You know, I'm kind of going with that country vibe that's here. To be. Hey, why not? Up to D. Last line. I'm a little behind. Walk up to that D. Up to 
Legato. Nice. So yeah. I, I, I think you're, you know, demonstrating how there doesn't have to be a lot of notes. There doesn't have to be a lot of different rhythmic things. This is definitely to a great. Be able to sight read a, a, a nice sounding melody. <laughs> you know. Yeah. This is this is a great. Uh, this is a uh, this is a great uh, anthem for less is more. Yeah. Type of thing. But um, look, if you're thinking about okay, if I play this once or twice, I'm going to memorize this. Yeah. There's a lot of techniques for getting around that, right. and you should practice every one of them. One of them is what I'm just doing right here. You can go yeah. through this every time and change your phrasing, yeah. um, uh, you know, and, and come around and do it differently uh, that way. You could here's a couple tips to, uh, to keep on the side too. Um, I could take this, maybe just turn my click on, and this could also work with the track. Uh, but uh, let's say I just take the click. Instead of reading this the way we're doing from left to right you know, and following it the way we're supposed to, mm -hmm. I can read this backwards. I can read this vertically and go mm -hmm. from the, the first bar of each system. Mm -hmm. um, so, for instance, here, we got a, a click here. So if I wanted to um, – uh, where's my downbeat? There's my one. Two, three, first bar. Now I'm going to go down to the next first bar. Ah. Uh. Now the next first bar. You know, I've just made a new chart. Mm -hmm. I got something fresh to read. Right. So I could do that. I can shuffle that order instead right. of one, two, three, four vertical lines. One, two, three, four, four, three, right. two, one. I could do it backwards. I could, you know what I mean? So yeah, most, um, and we discussed this, and it's part of our plan here, most sight reading courses have a lot of stuff to sight read, okay? This is not necessarily about that this first course. No. This is about giving you the tools and the proof of life that you can sight read in subsequent courses or extensions of this course. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a lot of other interesting things to read that sound really nice when you read them and play them correctly. And I'll introduce you to the concepts, you know, my ideas and my tricks, so to speak, to you start dealing with reading subdivisions, reading key signatures, and, yeah. you know, and there's a whole numerical system that I, I follow and this and that. Right now we're trying to keep it as simple as possible Just because, like us, I said, you know, there's yeah. too much thrown at you in these beginning methods yeah. and you get overwhelmed and that's where everybody feels like, I can't do this. Right, that's when they... Because I just know, I got run over before I quit. even really got started. Right. So um, we also discussed how, you know... Um, being able to pick up a songbook, you know, a Beatles songbook, any, any songbook, sure. Um, you'll find that the melodies are, are not too far away from what I just played. Not too placed. far away from that at all. <laughs> no, they're not. Um, and uh, you know, as guitar players, we do like to play the melodies. We do like to do instrumental versions of some of our favorite tunes, mm -hmm. and we're using our ear to pick them out or tab. Right? I think learning these fundamental sight reading skills will just, you know, kind of open up the door to be able to quickly access as many melodies as you like from as many songbooks as you like, you know, without requiring you to be, quote, you know, the crack sight reader that can walk into the gig and read tons of black between the bars, right? Mm -hmm. So do you want to go on to another, um, where do you want to take us now? So we'll go through the course, and I'm going to take you through what we've been talking about. Yeah. Um, basic fundamentals of what you're reading. We get some notes. We get some downbeat rhythms. Mm -hmm. The rhythms will not be any more complicated than that. I want you to win. I want you to get through the whole course. and. So the course is whole notes, quarter notes, and half notes. Yep, that's it. No okay. subdivisions, anything like that. Um, we will learn a, a, an octave's worth of notes. So yeah. by the time we're done with the course, we will be able to do this open G. Yeah. To that G on the high E string, third fret. Okay. We'll be able to do that. Yep, no sharps or flats. It puts us in the key of C, but, you know, it also gives me opportunity to do everything that's under that umbrella, mm -hmm. which I do. Yeah. So we'll also throw in a couple elements. Mm -hmm. um, actually, only three. Uh, I'll show you how to extend the values of notes and there's, uh, or, the va or extend, you know, what's on the paper. I do with, uh, so I had to deal with dots, ties, and repeat signs. Okay. And that's it. That's what all about we're doing. rests? Oh, I'm sorry, you're right. Yes. I skipped this year. 
Good That's call. quite all right. That's yeah, so we get out of the we get out of whole notes, half notes, and whole notes, half notes, quarter notes. We go right into the rest. Okay. Yeah, we go into the rest. We do do that. So uh, our main elements are the notes, their corresponding rests, mm -hmm. and those three additives, and that's it. And just and just those those eight notes I just showed you. Yeah. And we do it a lot. That's the point. Yeah. And once you know, you should be able to walk out of this and feel pretty confident. Like oh, I can, I have a foundation here. I can build. I mean, you on. can play a lot of music with just that. Right. And to prove that point at the yeah. end, I give you three tunes. Yeah. I, I give you. Um, uh, uh, I call them G to G blues, G to G rock, mm -hmm. G to G funk. Mm -hmm. So if we got time, we want to do we one. We do have time. So um, while you're dialing it up, the next series of lessons are on you know whole note rests, half note rests, quarter note rests. Then Chris introduces E, F, and G notes. Um, then you'll start playing. Uh, songs he's written etudes if you will hate well, the to more use notes that i add the more interesting i can make those melodies and right. the deeper the tracks you know get and this and that so you get um uh, up to playing b c d e f and g and then you discuss dots ties and repeat signs right um dotted half notes ties um and then uh we wind up being able to play Let's see if we can get all three of these. And Tommy, if you could just show the charts um, full screen um, so that folks can kind of follow along. This is where the course will take you. What are you going to start with, the blues? Yeah, we can go right in a row with that stuff. So the blues is, uh, uh, guess what, 12 bars. Um, but you'll see all, all the elements in there. I'm looking at everything that the chorus has worked on. There's the, um, uh, all the notes, the rests, the ties, the dots. There's a repeat sign at the end, which is going to tell us to go back to the beginning and play it again. And um, there it is. So, you, be, you know, hey, watch. We're not going to play anything off the downbeat, and it still sounds pretty hip. It's a fun track, too. This is okay, now, favorites. before you start, uh, I just want you to shout out to your fans in Hawaii, Mexico, the UK, Germany, Pakistan, Illinois, Georgia, Dallas, and Vancouver. Vancouver is one of my favorite cities. Lived there for three years. Um, they're tuned in right now. Right on. How Illinois, I might, I'm probably going to see you next month. Nice. Not musically, though. My, my soccer star son has got a, in a national tournament. Even better. Yeah, right. you know? It is even better. <laughs> um, also, we have shout out to Maurice Arenas, who's tuned in. Mo. One of your He's one of my True Fire fellow brethren. Fellow True Fire educators. He's, he's New York, isn't he? New York City or? I thought where? Connecticut. Maurice, where are you? Maurice, where the heck are you? He man? just did a True Fire Live. Uh, he's also a phenomenal player. Um, and. Uh, so let's play the blues one. Okay. Let's follow the chart, everyone. And hey, I'm going to try to play, you know, bluesy with these open position notes. That would repeat. Oh, if you want me to repeat it, I will. The, you know, we, we, we would play it again. That's going to go through the 12 bars. There's something happening there. I want to, uh, it's something I will emphasize. You'll hear me say it a lot in the course. Um, uh, when you're reading and you make a mistake, which I did, uh, don't stop. It's something, if you allow yourself to do it, you're, you're robbing yourself of a skill that you need to develop from the very beginning. And that is, you can't get lost. Mm -hmm. You absolutely cannot get lost. It goes all the way back to that first 16-bar um, exercise with the whole notes. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, one of the goals, one of the wins, the first victory is getting to the end at, this, at the time you're supposed to. Mm -hmm. So, you know, obviously this has more elements in it. It's the same goal. We got to stay in there. You, if you continually stop, you'll never develop the skill of relaxing when things happen, when they don't go the way you're supposed to, mm -hmm. and keeping... Um, 
track of where you are. You, you, you have to develop that skill. And the only way to do it is to brave through it. You know, to, you, you play a clam, you read a clam, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Keep going. And I, I, you know, when I was at Berkeley, when I was teaching at Berkeley, um, I spent as much time as I could with Mick Goodrick, who wouldn't? And um, that was one of his mantras. You know, if I, you know, sometimes just to get to the end is, that's what he, would, he told me. He's like, sometimes just get, I just want to get, I want them to get to the end, meaning right. the students. Um, that in itself is the win. And yeah. I, I never forgot that very simple concept yeah. coming from the ultimate guitar teacher. <laughs> right. You know, and, it's, and I'm like, yeah, you know what? That, yeah, that's, that's something that's got to be, uh, that's, that's got to be at the forefront. So um, you play something you're not supposed to, brave through it. You got to keep going. Yeah, you got to keep going. So that was the blues one. Mm -hmm. The next one is what, rock? Yeah. Let's do that one. So that, the one I just played was, um, you know, I, I take in a mixed Lydian vibe. So I'm using a G to G in the key of C. Um, okay, what we're looking at now is um, something in um, uh, A, you know, we, definitely an Aeolian thing. Uh, the, every element is in here, again. Uh, dots, ties, repeat signs, all the notes, everything is in there. Uh, the repeat signs are in different spots. So, you know, if you're watching this and watching along as I play this and stuff, you have two zones here uh, for repeat signs, which one of them I just found a mistake. So when you're looking at it with me, <laughs> in bar 15, there is supposed to be a repeat sign at the beginning of that bar to lock up those two bars because otherwise that's telling me to go back to the beginning. And that's okay. not what I'm going to do and it's not what I want you to do. Okay. Okay. So 103 beats per minute, using the same notes, and we're going to play it. And I should have my glasses on. Sorry, do that again. Like I said, I should have my glasses on. I had to make it smaller on the screen. Here we go. One more. Pass that repeat sign. Big rest. Here we go. Another big rest. Four repeat times. Keep checking. Pass the repeat sign. Next line. I'm sorry, um, rest. Last line. Nice. Steve played cool stuff on that. Who? who um, Jenkins. Steve Jenkins. Props. Said, uh, he's always, done a lot of stuff. Always with plays you on my and stuff. With us, right? I've, this is this will be my 40th course, and I bet you Steve has played on. Close, half of them, maybe. Yeah. yeah, he always sounds great. He does sound great. Um, and you told me before we went live, he's ready to finally come in here and do his own do thing. his own thing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, we were just talking about. It. He mentioned it. He's he's got some stuff up his sleeve. Uh, he wants to he wants to take you into the Steve Jenkins world. Cool. Yeah. Um, okay, and the last uh, track that we're working our way towards in the course is a funk course, a funk track. Yeah. Yeah, just taking a quick look at it. So if you were me and you had a um, chart put in front of you for not the first time, but, you know, just getting ready to play it, I'm looking at um, things that I'm taking mental notes of, you know, reading things that I'm going to um, be aware of. I'm looking at those ties, and um, there's a consistency with them. You know, there's, there's two types of values I got mm -hmm. there. I'm looking at, is there any jumps that are big? You know, something that might be a little, um, might throw me a little curveball. Mm -hmm. I should always do that. If you have a chance, everybody, everybody always has, you're always going to have the opportunity, especially for by yourself. You, got, mm -hmm. you can make any rules you want. But um, the myth that, you know, 
that there are these demons out there that you could just throw this chart in front of them and just go, all right, ready? Mm -hmm. Maybe, but that's not really what happens 99.9% .9 of the time. You always right. get time to check out a chart, right. take some mental notes, right. you know, and this and that. So, okay. And so you just did that. Right. I just <laughs> took my mental notes yeah. and, uh, and I'm ready to go. And it, again, we have our elements, our notes, and this and that. So this is a funk track. Um, this will probably be the most peppy of the, uh, of the collection. This one yeah. is at 120. You know, and I've tried to work you up to reading that. The, the purpose of that is to push that skill of looking ahead. You just mm -hmm. got to do it a little bit more rapidly. Mm -hmm. So I definitely, you know, I took the liberty, started to a little bit. I wanted to read it um, musically. So I started to chop some um, durations. Mm -hmm. you know, those quarter notes started to become a little bit of staccato quarter notes yeah. and put some vibrato in there. Yeah. And again, if you, you know, as you read through this, you should try to change up your phrasing every time to keep, there's got to be a fresh element in there every mm -hmm. time. You, were not, you, I, you should never need to want to go through reading this exactly the same way. Every time. Yeah, you got notes on the paper you got to read, but right. you can interpret them differently right. every single time because the goal is we want to read music. Yeah. So um, an, another thing we were talking about was, you know, ultimately after you've played that a few times, you, you start to memorize it, right? And that's not, while that may not be a good thing for your sight reading, it's not a bad thing for your guitar playing. You know, you even what you just played, you know, once you're very familiar with it, you can start to be more expressive and do some of the things and take some liberties. But it also, um, we're talking about how sight reading busts you out of the rut of your, let's call it your, you know, your muscle memory, you know, how your fingers are just used to doing kind of the same old, same old, you know. But reading music is taking you outside of that, right? Because well, you're entering into somebody else's world. Right, which is, I think, a very cool thing for, for all guitar players, you know? Well, look, one tried and true way, especially from, you know, any, any jazz guy, and I spent plenty of my time under, you know, that type of education, um, you end up reading, because you have no choice, because there's no tablature for it. Mm -hmm. You want to learn... You know, you want to look at a transcription of of a, of a trumpet solo. Right. You're going to read it. Right. You know, you're going to you're going to read that Coltrane solo. Right. You know, you're going to read Bill Evans' uh, right hand. Right. Because that's it. It's all you have and stuff. Right. And like what you just said, that'll take you right out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Which is, I think, everyone wants to. You know, how often have you heard a student say, "You know, I'm in in that rut, the proverbial rut." Right. Here's a great way to do that. I mean, there's so many good reasons to learn how to sight read. Um, even at this, let's call it remedial level, you know? I, about I, rudiment, rudimentary level. Yes. Yeah, I'm okay. not throwing you back. Remedial sounds no, like you got right, punished. Right, 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 <laughs> um, right. Well stated, man. <laughs> but so there you have it. That's um, Chris's sight reading for guitar. We're not sure of the title, but I'm sure it'll have sight reading in it. That's and at the top of the list. In the title. Yes. Um, we'll be shooting that over the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. It should be available within the next 60 to 90 days. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel very, very confident that you will get the proof of life that you're looking for, that you 
you can learn how to read music. And even learning this, you know, even though there's no sharps or flats or, you know, a lot of, let's call it super syncopated fancy stuff, as I think Chris has demonstrated, there's a lot of melodies and a lot of cool music that you can make. That was flashing me back, by the way. I remember, you know, uh, in New York, where I grew up, I was part of an ensemble, like a jazz ensemble, you know, and they put the music and it wasn't r really super difficult and you'd have your part. And I love how you've brought in the band tracks because it makes it, you know, so exciting and so gratifying to hear something that you're reading off a piece of paper, playing on your instrument and interacting with the band. It's like, you know. Yeah. It's the best feeling and in the world. You know, maybe getting uh, some reading chops will give you more confidence or the confidence, a little bit of confidence that you need to go out and start doing that. Right. Maybe you have been afraid to do that because, yeah. you know, wow, I'm supposed to be able to read. Because you've told yourself you can't do it. Nah, you, you know? can do it. You can do it. And you can see, like, sometimes the simplest stuff, maybe that's all it takes. And all yeah. of a sudden you put, this is just a small part right. in a bunch of other small parts and look yeah. at the end result. Yeah. It's fun. Well, you've done a great job on this thing, man, and I'm very excited about the course. Like I said, we've been, I remember you and I talking about this maybe, God, a decade ago. Um, yeah, actually, yeah. And it's like, okay, That's true. it's time, you know, it's yeah, time. Yeah, we literally started and throwing this around that this long ago. This professor of the deep, yeah. as we call you, is, is the guy to do it, and you've just done a fabulous job. Um, we're running a little bit over, but we have got to show folks your guitar. Let me get it for you. Okay? My, my b -less guitar. Okay. Still missing a string. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Okay. You don't need the cord. No, I mean, you know, it's got to, no. Cause, Tommy, can I pull the cord? Yes. So. Yeah, why don't you plug it in just so you can demonstrate the switches and stuff? Uh, okay. We'll try to be. <laughs> that, you know, string broke on a floating bridge, so that means, you know, there's a little bit of a. Uh, of uh, circumstances I can't control, but this is um, this is uh, this is a guitar built by Kieran Downs. I've been playing Downs guitars on my courses, uh, last couple courses. I think starting with Thirty Funk Rhythms, you must know where I had the orange one, and that was his stock um, uh, 101 H. Um, H means humbuckers and stuff. So we've been talking about doing something together for a while, and and this is we're getting pretty close. This is version two. So spell two. his name. Downs is D O W. N E S. N E S. Downsguitars.com. Downsguitars.com. Yeah. Because so, we have seen a lot of his guitars here and they've all been very good. Cool. Yeah, I brought the modular pick right. guard system right. uh, <laughs> the last time where yeah. I used three different pick guards throughout yeah. the choruses and stuff. And that's another thing. So Karen's really getting ready to, to, to come on the scene pretty, pretty heavily. Mm -hmm. And um, he chose me to be his first signature artist, which mm -hmm. I'm very, very happy and honored. Um, so this is version two of the prototype that we're working on together. Um, uh, this is, uh, uh, man, it's either an older or an ash body. Kieran's probably sitting there going, how many times have I told you this? But uh, um, d the main parts about this is lots of things. Uh, I have a slider. So that's my volume control. These are things that I first came up with on a guitar that um, first act actually, and based out of Boston, built for me, previous to my True Fire years. And I took some of those ideas over to this guitar, and Kieran includes them on his other ones. He calls them the Chris Bono Gadget Package. So I have a slider for volume. I have um, a kill switch, you know, to be able to do my own um, hyper tremolo stuttering effects. I use a tone styler uh, tone knob, so there's 11 notches in it. <laughs> Instead of it being a sweepable one, I uh -huh. have these 11 specific um, uh, zones of tone. Uh, I have a um, parallel, um, I'm sorry, an out of phase switch. So when I'm on the, these are my pickup selectors, by the way. So when I'm on the 
two and four positions like a traditional strat, I get those really, really quacky, super uh -huh. quacky um, tones. Um, and my pickup selectors are buttons. They are latching switches over here, latching buttons. And, um, you know, I use hybrid picking a lot, guitar gym hybrid picking and stuff like that. And uh, uh, these fingers are pretty used to being able to do what I want them to do. Mm -hmm. So I'm able to get combinations with my three fingers immediately. Mm -hmm. So instead of a five-way, which I started out with a five-way up here, and it was pretty cool because um, I wanted it to be within the throw of my hand yeah. to get from volume to pickup selector. Nice. But then we thought, like, why don't we try this yeah. where I could just quickly go from, say, <laughs> that's so not an E. Uh, <laughs> I could quickly go from, uh, um, right now I'm on two and four, and then I can go to neck only. Now to middle only. All three. So it's... Took a little getting used to and stuff, but it's it's something I couldn't even imagine having to do without, you know, when, mm -hmm. when I'm playing this. Um, there's a very cool neck profile. It's really hard to see, but the best way I could describe to you is it's like half D, half C. Down here, I have a lot of meat, so my my thumb has a lot to grab onto, but then there's nothing in the way. There's mm -hmm. not that shoulder that I have up here that I want. Mm -hmm. There's no shoulder here, so my hands are free to do their thing. I got a deep cutaway. Thank you, Steve Vai. Uh, he totally, you know, because I've had a gem since I was 16, uh, I'm just so used to having that access. Mm -hmm. I've even routed my 73 Strat for that. Mm -hmm. Like almost every guitar that <laughs> I can route without, uh -huh. you know, going somewhere below, um, I have done. So on this one, of course, we built them that way. Um, and let me tell you something. Drawing a headstock that you like, that's incredibly hard. It's really hard to draw a shape. God, I, I totally handed to guys who commit and and come up with things this is really hard to, to do something from scratch oh, yeah. so uh um mahogany neck um you know right now there's an ebony fretboard and stuff like that but and this is a very low profile floyd that uh, i'm lucky to have floyd rose 20 minutes away from me uh i'm in tom's river new jersey they're in wall so this is a this is a very late you know, uh, uh, recent addition to their line it's really low profile so none of that hardware is getting in my way which i've you know Anybody who's got a Floyd knows what I'm talking about. Um, and uh, Kieran does a super route on this where I can really, really pull back. Mm. So I'm definitely trying to, you know, get my best versions of Jeff Beck and David Torn on, you know, in my own way. Um, so that's it. You I mean, that's where we're at at this point. And we're, like I said, we're getting really close to being at a point where this is it. This is going to be the model. This is what it's going to be when he starts uh, building. And like any that. idea of the price point once it comes to market? No, yeah. not yet. And that's definitely not my wheelhouse. Well, it's very, uh, it of course, sounds, you want to make it so somebody can buy it. Sounds great. It plays great. It does. It's a lot of fun to play. You know, yeah, it you is. felt it before. It's, it's it the, is. the neck but is a yeah, very kind of unique approach to the, you know, the controls and the switches and, you know. And, it, and also look at the, the way the neck does this. That's yeah. also on purpose. That is from the cool things about Kleins. Yeah. Um, you know, the way that they sit like this and it's mm -hmm. right there as opposed to, you know, the natural. Most necks are more horizontal um, or maybe like, you know, I guess you call it like a right angle coming off of mm -hmm. you where I want it to be right there. And I do a lot of sitting down doing true fire production and or you know everything with a guitar and i want to be able to quickly do this mm -hmm. my arm's not hitting a neck nice and it's also if i let go it's balanced can if, you lift it and show that to the camera is that possible is it and sideways show that neck thing oh uh, if you can see that see, profile yeah. i yeah. mean if you could maybe oh, see yeah, yeah. that see the meat right there yeah and i don't know if you're gonna be able to I'm gonna angle it that way yeah, or maybe you can, you can actually down that way. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah, we put a lot of thought into this. You know, a lot of thought into this being here so it doesn't stab your leg. That's mm -hmm. in version one. That mm -hmm. was <laughs> yeah. Version one has got some stuff that we'll never do again. Um, but yeah, very excited about this. Really, really excited about this. So, is it totally out of tune with your yes, five strings? Yes, absolutely, there? one thousand hundred percent out of tune. Okay, nothing I could do. About. So. Um, Usually we have yeah, I don't think you that's guys play today. your way out. I, I don't want to put you on the spot there. But you can talk your way out, okay, um, by saying, hello, we've got more folks uh, 
Let's see. Did we skip uh, Keola from Hawaii chimed in and said, Chris made me a sight reader with his book. I'm sure the course will be awesome. Um, more folks from Italy, Madrid, Texas. Um, do you recommend reading studies for guitar by William Leavitt for extra reading practice? Yeah, you... I've read through that. I, I use it at Berkeley. There you go. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, Montreal uh, chimed in. Brazil, Puerto Rico. Um, a question from Stacy: Are there plans for any subsequent courses that build on this one? Well, definitely. In fact, this one not probably going to be called courses, level one. Um, but uh, we're contemplating having a channel, a separate from Chris's channel, dedicated to this. Uh, that will, you know, the key is just having a, a lot of cool stuff to read. Fresh so, material. So, yeah, fresh material. Fresh material. Um, so we think the channel is probably the best way to do that because no matter how much stuff you put in a course, it's going to, you know, eventually you're going to work through it all, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of plans for this. And, you know, most importantly, we're going to be listening for everybody's feedback, you know? Right. What's working? What's not working? What do you like? What don't you like? And uh, Chris is the guy to pull that all together and make it happen. Um, and a last question, Chris. Please ask Chris a good way to organize the daily work to advance properly in reading at in sight reading. So, what would you do on a daily basis? So you work, you got a day gig. Maybe you have an hour, hour and a half, uh, a few times a week. Well, how would you spend that? How much of that hour and a half would you spend reading? But I can give you all sorts of answers on that. Um, the most important thing, so I've been saying about the fresh material, um, that fresh material, don't make it vastly different. It's the same thing as building chops. It's, it's the same mantra I talk about in Guitar Gym, mm -hmm. the slow build. Yeah. You know, going from 77 beats per minute to 78 after some reps. Yeah. This is the same thing, just in a you know, different format. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're reading B, C, and D, shuffle the deck of B, C, and D a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, write your 16 bar exercise, then take it, especially if you're doing it digitally, you know, you can do this very easily. Just change a couple notes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, and whatever time you allot for reading, your 15 minutes, do that. You know, Monday is my BCD day, and, you know, right. tomorrow I'm going to include another note or another, just one concept. Maybe today I'm going to get those dots in there. Just build upon, you know, slowly, slowly mm -hmm. build upon your, build your skills, build, mm -hmm. build your skill set. Because if you don't put that time in and don't put that, that um, fresh material repetition mm -hmm. without recycling of your material, you're going to get to that point where you get overwhelmed and that's mm -hmm. where you're going to get frustrated and that's where the whole, I can't do this, yeah. um, sets in and stuff. So you stick with that and you will read. And I say this because I've watched this process work for, with the students that have dedicated the time to it and follow the directions. Mm -hmm. And they'll all tell you the same thing, that the, there is no skipping the steps. Mm -hmm. You follow the steps and you will read. Cool. Chris, thanks, man. Thank you, Brad. I appreciate you carving out this time. I know you got to get back to your shoot. Say goodbye to the folks out there. Make like I'm playing. And uh, <laughs> check out Chris's Guitar Gym series, man. He's got, man, you've covered just about every technique in there from, what, hammers, speed picking, hybrid picking, uh, ar arpeggios. I mean, how many Guitar Gym? 15. 15 of those. There's 15. There's 15. Um, and counting. Professor of the deep. Thank you, man. Thank you, Brett. We'll see y'all. Thanks for tuning in.